Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man. And as you can tell by the chat box and my stats tab and the cape on my back, we got 99 construction last video and unlocked probably one of the most useful forms of transportation for an Ultimate Iron Man, the construction cape, which if you didn't know already, it gives you the option to teleport to any POH portal in the game. And uh, that's all we did last video. We spent the whole time training construction, a little bit of AFK sacred eel fishing. We can get rid of this now. And as you can see, we have 349 crystal shards left over. You can't out these. Uh, that failed to pull a couple months ago, and I showed that in the video uh, when that pull failed. So the only practical use that I think would be worth it for me to use those for would be for the Blade of Salador. I don't think Divine Potions are worth an inventory slot just based on my setup and my goals, at least at like this point in the account. So this video, I want to learn the gauntlet. I've never done it on any account before, and in fact, this is my only account that even has access to Prifnas. And I totally don't expect to actually get the Blade of Salador. I'm just using this as more of like an excuse to learn the gauntlet. It. And I'm not gonna be like actually grinding out the blade because I don't really care about that much. To be honest, I'd rather have the pet than the blade um, because the corrupt blade is untradeable, meaning it has to be in your inventory forever. You can't put it in the looting bag. Whereas the alternative, I guess, would be like a rapier, even though that's for stab and the blade is for slash. Um, the rapier is tradable, so that would not be a permanent inventory slot taken up. Now, the thing about the gauntlet is that it is a dangerous death for hardcores, meaning if you have items in a death storage, like on an ultimate Iron Man or any kind of account, I guess, if you die in the gauntlet, all these items will be wiped. So we have to have all this stuff in our inventory or in the looting bag. And I guess Jagex probably made it on purpose so that when you go into the gauntlet, all the items in your inventory are held for you. So when you actually do the gauntlet, you'll have an empty inventory. And then when you die at the gauntlet or leave the gauntlet, all your items will be returned back to you in your inventory. So we don't have to worry about inventory space for it. And I'm not going to name any names here, but there have been a couple of UIMs in the past <coughs> to <can, coughs> that have wiped <coughs> Lapras <coughs> by uh, having stuff in his spory and then dying in the gauntlet. So we definitely don't want that to happen to this account. Before we head to the gauntlet, well, we have to get the looting bag first, but I want to spend some time clearing some stuff up. So like, for example, we don't need the construction hood because we'll probably like really never have this on the cape rack in the POH. We'll probably just always keep the construction cape in the inventory. Uh, we can drop these other two runes that we had here for the house help before the earth runes and the air runes because obviously we don't need home teleports now uh, and I guess we can just keep these in the room pouch for now. The next step towards clearing up space is filling up the nexus with a bunch of teleports because I don't want to have to carry law runes around anymore because the construction cape is all we need. So these are the ones that we currently have built all the highlight ones right here we have eight of them built uh, and then to add more we have to actually upgrade the nexus first. So let's go do that. I just realized I probably shouldn't have dropped those uh, earth and air runes before because these are the runes that we need for all the teleports that I want to add. So it's a little mistake. I mean, not a big deal. It's just a few extra K really. But the upgrade to the Nexus is going to be pretty expensive though. We need two magic stones, which are almost a mil each. Oh my God. <laughs> And then two gold leaves, so yeah, it's going to end up costing us like 2.2, 2.3 mil. But it's going to be worth it. I don't want to accidentally buy five. That would not be a good thing to happen. <laughs> so this is a very pricey, but also a very worthwhile upgrade. The first bit of post-99 construction XP, and now we have the highest tier of Nexus, the Crystalline Portal Nexus, which allows for all the teleports possible to be put into there. Uh, if you didn't know, this is just like building a portal in your POH, except you can have them all in one spot, so it's like a big hub for all of them. So let's go uh, start building these teleports then. <laughs> this actually worked out kind of well. We have 8k law runes exactly. I did not plan that out. And 8k also happens to be the amount of law runes that we need for the teleports that I want to build. So let's take a look at all the money that we have here so if we put all the money that we currently have on us into nightmare zone uh, we have 29 mil so i'm gonna take out i don't know like 20 mil and we'll see how much money we spend on all the teleports oh yeah luckily we have these blood runes left over from i guess a couple of raids or something that i forgot to sell before so we will be using those for one of the teleports we need 2k blood runes okay it only took like less than 10 minutes to buy all these runes here that we needed but let's start adding all these teleports into the Nexus. So the Drainer Manor one right here, this is really nice for clue scrolls. Oh, we have to uh, take the Law Runes out of the root pouch. There's a bunch of clue steps that require you to go to Drainer Manor. So I should have built this one a long time ago. I regret not doing that, but better later than never. And then Lumby, Camelot, Watchtower slash Yannel. Because we had the Bloods from before and I had 2,000 more Law Runes to work with, I want to add the Apatol Dungeon. There's like a couple clue steps around there. Probably won't even end up being that useful, but hey, we'll have it. I want to fill this up like all the way eventually, minus the Willy Teleports. And then the last one I want to build is the Varrock Teleport. This is really important because we are going to be dropping the Tome of Fire 
and we need all the teleports in here that require fire runes and I guess Virox is really like the main one and that is all of them hopefully once you press save pretty much all these runes here most of them should be gone right confirm nice and then I could just keep a stack of fire runes in the rune pouch because I think we have space right now and put those in there those in there if I need to alk stuff I could just keep a stack of fire runes in here we don't need dust runes anymore and this is a very iconic moment. We are going to be alking the dust staff. If we take a look at the collection log here, uh, we've gotten three dust battle staffs. All three of these were from superiors. I remember the first two that we got were like almost back to back within the same task. And then like a couple weeks later, we got a third one from Gargoyles. But this is still the very first original dust staff that we ever got on the account a long, long time ago. And we're finally going to be saying goodbye now. There's just no use for it anymore. I pretty much only used it for house teleports. And I had like a weird method that I used for superior gargoyles, but there's no reason to keep it. So this is it. Goodbye, staff. And then the next item that we're going to be getting rid of is the Tome of Fire. We've had this since pretty much like literally the start of the account, of course, since we did the 99 fire making grind. And to be fair, I should have dropped this a long time ago because really the only uses that I had for it was rock teleports and then alking. But like I said before, we just keep a stack of fire runes on me if I really need to out. Like the main other uses for this is the Nightmare Boss and then Ice Demon and Raids. And you know, on the UIM, you gotta pick and choose what spots are most important and what items you really want to keep. Like for example, I'd rather have like an Anguish and a Torture over a Tome of Fire and Burnt Pages, if that makes sense. So uh, these two just aren't worth it anymore. We have no reason to keep them. And they are going over to the main now. That's it. We freed up four inventory spots on the ultimate now. The Law Runes, the Dust Staff, the Tome of Fire, and the Burnt Pages. And man, feels very, very good to be free of those. So once we claim back these items right here, let's take a look and see how full the looting bag is. I haven't checked yet. So we have 10 more spots open, so... The space is looking pretty good. I'm happy with this, very happy with this. It's so weird. First off, I'm so used to always going here to try and teleport home. And second off, I'm used to going here to like teleport to wherever I need to go because usually I'd have law runes on me, but now I have to go through here and I'll probably like end up organizing these so I know where they're all at because right now it's just a big cluster frick of all these here. But let's go buy some more fire runes because we're gonna get a lot of alkables from the gauntlet. So may as well keep a few thousand fire runes on me for all those elks. And also it looks like we didn't spend as much as I thought we would on all those runes for the teleports. Uh, it was only like 830k it looks like. So that's not bad at all. Okay, everything is out of Hispori. I double and triple check to make sure there's nothing there so we can die at the gauntlet. I'm going to put all this money that we have here into Nightmare Zone because I want to keep track of all the money that we make from all the Alks that we get from the Gauntlet. So I think we're uh, pretty much all ready to go. I've never done the Gauntlet and I've also never watched people do the Gauntlet. I've kind of seen clips before of like people killing the final boss and getting their loot, but I don't really know how the Gauntlet works. So I'm going to watch a couple guides very quickly and I'll probably do most of the learning in the actual gauntlet rather than like watching videos for an hour or something. I'd rather just do it, you know? I actually don't even know where this place is. <laughs> okay, the gauntlet is here in the northwest corner of Prifnas, and there is the portal into the gauntlet. I've definitely seen this before in like people's progress videos and stuff. Here we are though, this is the place, this is the spot. Oh yeah, with the scoreboard here, I think you can check your stats and the global stats, so never done it before. And I guess we'll be uh, adding quite a bit to the death counter, I'm sure. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about before we head in here is this poll right here. So this actually happened quite a bit ago. And there are all these updates that were supposed to happen to the gauntlet, but they haven't been added into the game yet, even though every single one of these questions passed. And they're all quality of life updates for the gauntlet. So, I mean, I probably should have waited to do the gauntlet first, but with UIM, you can't really exactly switch between things too often. I don't want to carry all those crystal shards around with me. So we're just going to do it now. I'll learn how to do it the old way. And I'll spend the rest of my life complaining to the noobs about how we had so hard back in our day. I think the most convenient change that's happening here, uh, let me find it, is right here. With the final boss, you have to count to four because it does four attack styles of magic and then four of range. And you have to count four each time which is very difficult because that's a very high number and they're making it so there's me like an animation and a sound so you don't really even have to count anymore i'm guessing this will probably come into the game in like a week or two i'm sure by the time you're seeing this video though this is already added into the game but it's not yet as of this time i've been trying to like study this stuff over here the last few minutes but honestly you can really only learn by doing it so uh, i'm pretty sure we can just wear what we have on us and 
Uh, we'll just be naked once we go in there, so we don't have to actually worry about taking everything off. Okay, yeah, so they give you a warning here as well when you first talk to him. But here we go, let's go into the gauntlet for the first time. And I think this first time that I go in there, I'll just kind of like run around and explore and just figure out how to build the things. But here we go, first time in the gauntlet. All right, let's do this. No. Oh, we get a uh, participation trophy. Let's see what we get. Wow, amazing. No. Getting better and better, though. Yes, I did it. Look at that inventory, dude. That was so close. Whew, first ever gauntlet. It's probably really, really bad. That was like 12 and a half minutes. Oh, yeah, so once you get 1kc, you can do the corrupt gauntlet then which uh, we're gonna hold off on. I would like to get 1kc. You all know I'm not good at the game. Wait, that's actually really good. That's like 100k or something worth of alkables slash syllables. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> What's he doing here? He is always around everywhere, always watching. That was a third try gauntlet, by the way. So you know what they say, third try is a charm. Yes, there we go, kc number two. Pretty sure we beat the time by a decent amount there. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, wow, <laughs> okay. It's always such a satisfying feeling when you kill the Hunleth. Casey number three. Ooh, PB, yep. I started using this timer here, and pretty much once you go into the boss room, you just press this one second after the boss's first attack, and then it like keeps track of the amount of time, so it knows when the boss is gonna switch attack styles, and just tells you when you need to switch your prayer. So this is very, very helpful, especially for learning. And if you just Google Gauntlet Timer OSRS, it's the first thing that comes up. No, that was gonna be a PV. That was gonna be such a good PV. Well, you live and you learn. Interesting, so these guys can't come into like the main room area that you do all your prep in. You just safe spot them here. Normally, they just run all the way around the whole map and follow you throughout the whole thing, so. It's good to know. Yo, it's a PB. So the prep time for the Corrupt Gauntlet is seven and a half minutes. So I would have made it that time. And uh, we broke 10 minutes overall as well. And we do not get rewarded with anything special. Woo. Nice, 8.43, dude. 6.09 prep time. Oof, that's 10 KC as well. And as per tradition, not rewarded. Between the normal gauntlet and the corrupt gauntlet, of course the corrupt gauntlet has a much better drop table overall, but also all the uniques are more common on the corrupt table, which of course makes more sense. So you can see on the regular mode, it's 1 out of 2k for the blade and 1 out of 2k for the pet, and then on corrupt, it's 1 out of 400 for the blade and 1 out of 800 for the pet. And uh, after that last run, I'm feeling pretty confident. I don't know how long people usually wait to try the corrupt gauntlet, but my goal is to get one corrupt KC and I don't know how much harder it's going to be, but I think we'll just uh, head on in there and send it into the Corrupt. Only one way to learn it, right? No point putting it off any longer. No, first ever attempt. It was so close. I choked up at one point, and if I didn't, that probably would have been it. Alright, let's go again. Dude. <laughs> Second try. Corrupt Gauntlet. We got the cape, man. That was... I mean, it wasn't easy, but like I thought it would take me a couple hours to get this, but... Wow, we got it. All right, let's see the loot from the first ever Corrupt Gauntlet. Wow. Dude, that's such a good feeling getting that. Hey, two in a row and new PB as well. Ah, it's not bad, not bad, not bad. Oh, I probably should have said this last time. Uh, when you get a Corrupt KC, you get this cape and is also storable in the POH. It has no stats, it is just completely cosmetic. And if you destroy it, you can only get it back by doing another Corrupt Gauntlet. Come on! Oh my god, look at that inventory. Whew. It's three in a row though. It was a long humlift kill. Got uh, kind of unlucky, but three in a row, okay. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude, look at all those leftover supplies, too. That's a PB. Four in a row. Nice. Yo, that has to be a PB. 9-10. Wow. <laughs> oh, Crystal Armor Seed, what? Oh my god. <laughs> 4.6 mil. This is a 5kc corrupt gauntlet. So, you turn the Crystal Armor Seed into a piece of Crystal Armor. And uh, I don't think this has any practical use on the UIM, so 
I'll probably just end up dropping it over to the main. But before we do wrap up with the gauntlet here, I do want to get 10 corrupt KC just so that way we'll be ranked on the high scores because that's the threshold to be ranked. The crystal armor seed from the regular gauntlet is 1 out of 120. Then for the corrupt gauntlet, which is what we did, is 1 out of 50. Yeah, I think the main use for crystal armor on a UIM would be for Hydra, but that's pretty far away. And then also it degrades too. Uh, if we go down over here, there's a degradation and upkeep on that would be kind of annoying. Not to mention that's also untradeable too, meaning I couldn't put it in the looting bag. So very, very niche uses for it, but it won't be useful for me. There's six, there's seven. Okay, kind of random, very important announcement right here. Jagex announced that someone finally got the very first Onyx from the bag full of gems from Motherload Mine. Uh, it's 1 out of 100 million chance per golden nugget, which comes out to a 1 out of 2.5 million chance per bag full of gems. And this has been out since April 21st, 2016, and it's the first time anyone's ever gotten an Onyx. This is huge RuneScape history in the making right here. I was thinking maybe the Crystal Armor might be better for Zora as well, but either way, it's an untradeable item. I don't want to have to keep up a permanent inventory slot because of that. 8kc. 9. No. Ah, oh, that should have been it. All right, there we go. 10 KC at the Corrupt Gauntlet. Let's see the final loot that we will be getting from this chest here. And uh, we are now ranked on the high scores as well, and we got a Crystal Weapon Seed too. The Crystal Weapon Seed is 1 out of 120 from the regular Gauntlet, and then 1 out of 50 from the Corrupt Gauntlet. Um, but it doesn't really matter because we could just buy those anytime for 750k from some person in Prifnos. However, there is a master stash unit that requires just a crystal bow. So I think we'll charge this thing up and build the stash unit and then just have that stored away in there. As I'm finishing up alking these dragon arrows here, which may trigger a few people, I just want to show the money that we made from the gauntlet because we're about to spend some money for the master stash unit. Uh, so we made about 2 mil GP in total, or maybe like just a little bit over 2 mil. Plus I dropped some stuff over to the main, but in terms of just straight up GP on the UIM, that's what we got, which sort of makes up for all the money that we just spent on the Nexus. Here's the loot tracker. I guess it doesn't take into account the gauntlet versus the corrupt gauntlet, so it's all just matched into one. We did 10 regular and 10 corrupt. I guess I died 11 times and got some newbie loot like this stuff down over here. But we made 7.5 mil from 20 gauntlets. But I guess we should take out the crystal armor seed, 4.6 mil. So in reality, it's closer to about 3 mil in loot. Look at me all prepared to build this master stash. I got my Serp Helm on so I don't get poisoned. I got the stamina potion because I have the node staminas on me. Oh yeah, it probably helped to actually make the... Okay. Okay, weapon singing. I have never done this before, but apparently you need 78 crafting and 78 smithing, which we do have, uh, and we're gonna make a crystal bow. And that should use up 40 crystal shards. We get a uh, crafting and smithing XP out of that as well. Before we do drop this over to the main, I'm just gonna like sing and then uncharge over and over the crystal armor seed, just so we get some extra smithing and crafting XP, so you don't have to waste the shards by just dropping them. Oh wow, I never even knew there was a shortcut here to get to the Ireworth camp. This is really fast. All right, here's the master stash unit, getting some post 99 construction XP. And then besides just having this ready for the clue when we do eventually get this master step, it's also a nice item we could store because the crystal bow could maybe actually be useful for some situations. Well, I guess with the blowpipe, it's not really relevant. Maybe if we wipe on the account, we can come here and use the crystal bow to rebuild at Zora, maybe. Or we could revert it back to a weapon seed if I ever need like a crystal shield or a crystal halberd and I have no money left. Anyways, last thoughts about the gauntlet. So if you couldn't tell already, it's pretty much like a dungeoneering slash raid style minigame. Like this is what dungeoneering would have been if it was an old school, I think. It's a very good place to rebuild if you wipe because you need nothing at all. And as you can see, in just a day of learning the gauntlet, made a couple of mil in just straight up GP. The reason why I didn't want to stay there longer was because of the pull that I showed earlier. All these changes are supposed to be happening pretty soon, and after doing the gauntlet, now I understand like all these questions and the significance of them. I've got to say, this is going to be a really, really nice update. The uh, demi boss is having set spots that should make it a lot easier because I think that's like the main RNG chance of whether or not you can finish the gauntlet just if you get lucky with the spawns. Or maybe that's just for me because I'm kind of learning as I go. Either way, maybe we'll come back in the future and do some more runs just for fun and ranks in the future. And speaking of ranks, I am the 57th UIM to even be ranked for the Corrupted Gauntlet. So as you can see, this could be some pretty pretty easy ranks in the future if I wanted to go for it. What's rank one at? Over 1,000. And then the gauntlet cape we can store right here in the cape rack and probably
probably never take out to wear ever again because it's not really a good item. Look at that collection log. The game's so easy, dude. Just get the drops and fill the log up, duh. I have accepted that I will not be having this crystal armor seed on the account for much longer, so we're just gonna use up all these shards now so I don't have to waste any more inventory slots for them. Oh, I thought it was like one seed per piece. Apparently the helm is one seed, the legs are two seeds, and the body is three seeds. So the only one we can make is the helm anyways. Now let's go make that 2.5k XP. We'll put it on, and uh, I guess we'll probably never wear this again. <laughs> if I try to revert it, we don't get the crystal shards back, but we do get the seed back. Okay, so we just keep on doing that and just get more and more XP each time. Yes, don't ask me again. Okay, so we'll just do that a few times. And here's the last time that we'll be making this. So it takes 50 shards each time, meaning we have no more use for these crystal shards now. Those are getting dropped, and they do not have a high alc value. Again, that's just an in-game value that I think is determined by what items appear on top on the ground. I think that's what the calculation is taken from. And same deal with the Crystal Helm. It's also not alchemizable anyways, but either way, I'd much prefer 4.6 mil GP on the main. Let's go revert that for the last time and give it over to the main. Well, farewell, Armor Seed. It was nice knowing you for just a day, but far playing UIM. And the last thing I want to do before we wrap up the video is get the quest cape back. We're gonna do uh, the Sins of the Father quest. So let's go gear up for that. Normally this boat to sleep costs 10k GP every single time, but you know, we got plenty of GP right now. So I'm gonna pay 1 million GP for permanent access. Um, it may not save money over the long run necessarily, but it's kind of more about the convenience of not always having to have the 10k GP on me. So there we go. It's probably worth it. All right, let's begin the very last quest on the ultimate Iron Man. When Slayer Music originally uploaded this video right here, the Sins of the Father quest guide, originally it was titled Daddy's Error. I'm sad they changed it back. Very difficult boss fight right here. Hey, look at all this music we're unlocking here. One day we'll get the music cape. I'm pretty sure all these boss fights minus the last one are all instants so that if you die, you lose everything. So hopefully, don't you see here. Yo, entering Darkmire. Sick. So this really cool outfit that we get from the quest, you can actually store it in the armor case here. I was about to show that you can't store it, but it turns out you actually can. I'm a little bit surprised about that, but it's very nice. For this last boss fight, it is instance and it costs 50k to get the items back if we do die. Come on, yes! Oh my- What? <laughs> Oh, dude. Yes, man. I feel like I died there, but I guess as a one hit point, I'll have to replay that and look at where my hit points was at. But dude, we got that, man. This is a little bit more challenging of a boss fight than I thought it would be. It took me a couple tries, but we got it. Uh, mainly due to the inventory space running out of food. I probably should have got Bruise and Restores out and it would have been no issue, but this was more of a fun challenge this way, I guess. Ever since the start of this account, the goal was to complete every quest in the game, and today we have accomplished that. We have 277 quest points. Everything we've done has led up to this point right here. Can you imagine if I just ended the series right there? Like, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you all next week with my RS3 series. All right, so we got this uh, Tome of XP. It's uh, three times 15K XP, so 15K Herb Lore, 30K Herb Lore, and now 45K Herb Lore. We now have access to Darkmire. We can get there with the Dragon's Medallion, or I believe that boat over there also now takes you to Darkmire as well. I'll probably eventually do the Sepulchre, maybe one day. I wanna get a second graceful outfit first though because I don't wanna lose my blue recolor. So if I ever do do that, it'd be pretty far in the future because I really just wanna get back into Slayer already. The last time this account has trained Slayer was five months ago when I had the Thermi task and got the occult necklace. We're still on that Thermi task. So next video, we are finally gonna be getting back into Slayer and I'll be talking about the future plans of this account and where I want the progress to go from here. That is all for today though, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again next time.